tonight on EKB Evening News at 6. After a meeting full of sound and fury, nothing. Good evening, I'm Gary Sloan. Well, Pike County's finances are up in the air tonight after a planned occupational tax failed to pass today's special meeting. After nearly three hours of public comment and a lengthy meeting behind closed doors, the tax failed to receive a motion. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele was at today's meeting. She tells us what happened today and looks ahead at what will happen next. It was a packed courthouse today as the Pike County Fiscal Court had its second reading of an ordinance to enact a 1% occupational tax. Seven county residents spoke during the public comments portion of the meeting and each were against the tax. Those in attendance heard a deafening silence as the Pike County Judge Executive, Bill Deskins, asked for a motion after the second reading of the occupational tax ordinance. We have no motion, we'll go on to other business. Judge Deskin says the magistrates couldn't agree on whether or not to pass the tax, and that's why the magistrates didn't give a motion. We discussed things, and uh, most of the people didn't uh, agree on everything, so and they didn't want to talk about it or vote for it. So it's been put off, and if it goes to the 31st, the 30th of this month, it'll end, and then uh, the county will close down because we don't have money to hire the people, pay the people back. Right now, the Pike County Fiscal Court has the weekend to determine how they will fix the $1.7 million shortfall. Me and Treasurer John DeBilliter will work through the weekend uh, coming up with 1.7 million cuts. I mean, we're going to, uh, we'll, we'll have to look at personnel, we'll have to look at services that we provide for the county, and, and try to weigh them to where uh, we make the right decisions. The Pike County Fiscal Court will hold a special meeting Monday at 10 a.m. to discuss the new budget. Reporting for EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Steele. One group perhaps breathing a sigh of relief tonight following the ordinance's failure would be the Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, which attended today's meeting. The chamber surveyed businesses in the county to see how much of an impact a 1% occupational tax would have on the economy. The chamber joined the fiscal court this morning to try to persuade the court to table the occupational tax until all data could be collected. The Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce encouraged the court to fill residents and business owners in on how much money they need exactly and wait to determine cuts after they have an exact numerical figure. Jacob Colley, president and CEO of the Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, says this is not what the residents and business owners of Pike County need right now. And proving to the businesses and citizens of the county um, that there is an exact need for how much money they will need and what cuts have been made um, and will be made over the long term because we want to see Pike County grow. We want to see business expand. We want to see jobs to be, job growth. Those are the things that our businesses and our, our community wants. Collie adds that some businesses may hesitate to locate here in the long run, and since Pike County is on the state line, some businesses may opt to go to Virginia or West Virginia. He says he doesn't think it will happen quickly, but over the next few years. One well, news that the tax ordinance will be under consideration this morning brought overwhelming opposition to today's meeting. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele spoke with some of those who showed up today to find out why they were opposed to the proposal. I stopped by the fiscal court meeting here today to voice my concern and represent the coal miners and the small business owners and the other constituents in the county. And really I think it's a, uh, it'll have a negative impact on businesses in the county. It'll also have a negative impact on people's, uh, on people's livelihood, on the money that they, uh, they take home there's going to be 1% less. What they have going out just on the physical court alone is outrageous. When you have two family members working for the county on the county's dollar, plus they have an office of their own, which is they rent. It's expensive. With that, utilities, phone service. I feel like the physical court has not done the due diligence to look within their own spending habits and done all the necessary cutting to get the uh, small amount that would be deficit uh, amount as low as possible. Anytime you want my money, you 
take it. You want to regulate it? You ice a lot. I don't steal. I'm a man of my word. I worked hard all my life. You see these hands? They're callous. You see a stop? I was at the 93 Weatherman's making this. You see this pin? That's what y'all want. The government finished presenting its case this morning in former State Representative W. Keith Hall's federal bribery trial. Afterwards, Hall took the stand in his own defense and stayed there most of the day. Under questioning, Hall admitted to giving thousands of dollars to former mine inspector Kelly Shortridge, but he claims he was the victim of the scam. Hall said under oath that he believed that all of the money he gave to Shortridge was going to be used for the Millard Little League. Hall also said he often co-signs loans for family and friends when they're in need. When the trial resumes tomorrow, the defense is expected to call four more witnesses and it is expected that the jury will get the case tomorrow afternoon. Well, three members of a Floyd County family were sentenced earlier this week for their part in a scheme to defraud insurance companies. According to the indictment, Charles Ray Tackett, Michael Ray Tackett, and Anna Grace McGuire took part in a plan to purchase classic cars and obtain estimates for their full restoration. After the cars were burned in a fire, they claimed the full restored value for the vehicles, even though no work were ever performed on them. In March, each reached a deal with prosecutors and pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy and one count of wire fraud. Charles Ray Tackett received the stiffest sentence at 48 months in prison. Michael Ray Tackett was sentenced to nine months, while McGuire got an eight-month sentence. Stanville attorney Eric C. Kahn is secured a small victory today after a judge issued a ruling in a class action lawsuit against him. Attorneys for 1,500 former clients suing him for fraud and malpractice have been seeking to freeze Kahn's assets until the end of the case. However, Floyd Circuit Judge Johnny Ray Harris ruled today that a complete freeze was not within its authority. The release of Kahn's funds comes with some stipulations, however. He is not allowed to transfer any money out of the United States, and he must produce a certified copy of his malpractice insurance policy. He is also ordered not to destroy any former client's medical files. Well, coming up, a new forecast predicts that natural gas rates will remain low, and a close call on US 23 kept traffic tied up for about an hour. We'll be back in two minutes. An explosive situation was avoided on US 23 in Floyd County this morning after a passenger car struck a truck carrying oxygen tanks. The accident occurred shortly before 10 o'clock at Stanville when the driver of a Nissan Rogue entering the highway pulled into the path of a truck owned by Scott Gross Company. Emergency responders from Betsy Lane Volunteer Fire Department and Kentucky Vehicle Enforcement were at the scene within minutes. CVE officer Thomas Gearhart explains what happened. Well, today, as far as we can tell, the preliminary investigation is that a vehicle was merging onto the uh, southbound traffic. Uh, as, as the vehicle moved on southbound traffic, apparently she moved in the path of a, a vehicle that was also southbound, causing a side swipe of uh, collision. At this time, we have one injured person in the, in the passenger car. Uh, she, the female and she's been transported to Pikeville Medical Center. The extent of the woman's injuries did not appear to be life-threatening. There was no immediate suspicion of alcohol or drug use being played in the role of the accident. Well, the latest forecast from a group of energy industry analysts predict that there is not likely to be a significant rise in natural gas prices for several years. During an industry conference in Pittsburgh yesterday, analysts with BTU Anal Analytics said that a continued glut of gas from the Appalachian Basin will keep supply higher than demand, leading to lower gas prices, especially as pipeline takeaway capacity continues to improve. Well, earlier today, the Pikeville Police Department confiscated marijuana plants and other various pills from a residence in Northgate Apartment Complex on Town Mountain Road. The Pikeville Housing Authority sent in the complaint to the Police Department while they were doing their annual ins maintenance inspections. 
the manager at that complex went in and found some various paraphernalia items and some white powder residue in the residence. She stopped at that point and contacted us here at the Pipewell Police Department to come over and be in the house with her. At that point, we went in, we found various pills, we found residue, we found growing materials, and we found upstairs in an adjacent bedroom on the third floor, we found a small grow operation with several plants. Police are not yet identifying the suspect while they continue to search for him. Well, coming up, Jamie Johnson will be in with all the latest sports news. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be here to tell us how much rain we can expect over the next few days. We'll be back in two minutes. Well, Lathan, it was a scorcher today. Temperatures back in the upper 80s, low 90s, and uh, we, due to the heat and the humidity, we're starting to see a few storms pop up. The Doppler radar showing those very scattered in nature. Actually, a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for folks up in Lawrence County. Nothing severe as of yet here across eastern Kentucky or even western West Virginia, southwest Virginia, but you'll notice a couple of cells throughout McGoffin County, both in northern and southern parts of McGoffin County. We'll zoom in here a little closer. These are moving more to the east and to the southeast, so you folks in Sayersville getting in on the rain now. Prestonsburg, you, it's going to be very close to making a, a, a heading in your direction. And then we have another cell in southern parts of McGoffin County, David and Martin, some of the communities that will be impacted by that cell. Again, locally heavy rainfall, some uh, frequent lightning, gusty winds possible as these storms move through. Satellite and radar composite, what is causing all this? We have a front to the north, expecting more in the way of showers and thunderstorms to develop in southern parts of Indiana, in uh, western parts of Kentucky. If that happens, that will eventually move toward eastern Kentucky during the overnight hours tonight. And then the big storm system right here, this one is moving in for Friday into Saturday, bringing in some much, much cooler air. We've talked about it all week. I'll show you the latest with the seven day forecast here in just a little bit. Through the rest of this evening and overnight tonight, we still have that slight risk for severe weather from Lexington, Cincinnati, all across eastern Kentucky, southwest Virginia, and most of western West Virginia as well. As far as temperatures go overnight tonight, well, by 7 o'clock, we're about 87 degrees, 83 by 9 o'clock, and by the time we head into the 11 o'clock hour, temperatures will have cooled into the mid-70s. But throughout the rest of this evening, scattered showers and thunderstorms will be a pretty good bet now that we're starting to see those fire up. Overnight lows tonight and by tomorrow morning, upper 60s as we head into the day tomorrow. Back into the mid and upper 80s, a little more in the way of cloud cover and the more sun that we see, the better chance of those storms turning severe tomorrow. So that's something we'll have to watch. Speaking of the cooler temperatures, by Saturday, 60s showing up on this one computer forecasting model for northern parts of Kentucky, southern Ohio. This is high temperatures, not overnight lows. This is the highest we will, the highest temperature we will see on Saturday. The rest of us into the low to mid 70s. So I told you some cooler air was on the way, and that is indeed the case. But for tomorrow, again, slight risk of severe weather all across the region. As far as the Pollen County is concerned, sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville, very low tomorrow with a better chance of showers and storms rolling in, 1.5 on Saturday. Again, the rain in the forecast, but as we dry things out on Sunday, that pollen count will begin to increase to a 3.7, but that is out of a possible 12. As far as that, all important, seven day forecast. Friday, 70% chance of rain, 80% chance of rain on Saturday. Sunday, looking dry, 76 degrees. That is a way to enjoy a late June day, 76, no humidity. Monday, most of the day looking dry. Tuesday, Wednesday, chance of showers back in the forecast. I don't think it's gonna be a washout of a day on Saturday. Right. I think once we get to evening and overnight Saturday night, mm -hmm. The rain will be moving out. Oh, good. So that's good news. That's very good news. Thanks. Beautiful Lee. day Sunday, though. Oh, I absolutely. Get absolutely. out and enjoy it. <laughs> absolutely. We'll be back with sports in two minutes.
Jamie, a big night in the NBA tonight. Well, we're finally here. We've <laughs> talked about it for it seems like forever. The NBA draft mm -hmm. begins tonight in less than an hour. We'll know whether or not Kentucky's Carl Anthony Towns will be selected with the number one overall pick in tonight's NBA draft. The Piscataway, New Jersey native was pleased to be back in familiar surroundings as the draft will be held in New York City and took a moment today to reflect on how his life has changed over the past year. Uh, this is amazing. I mean, uh, just only being in my backyard. I mean, uh, this is awesome to have this moment be cherished and uh, where I'm from. Uh, it's been a long road to get to the spot today where I'm at, but with uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of hours in the gym and some great support system that I've been fortunate and blessed to have, uh, this moment has finally arrived. Towns also spoke about the possibility of being selected by the Minnesota Timberwolves who hold that number one overall pick and he had nothing but praise for the future of the franchise despite coming off a 66 loss season and enduring a playoff drought of 11 years. Andrew Wiggins is as explosive and as talented as his. You also have uh, Ricky Rubio, uh, Zach Levine. Uh, I mean, you're talking about uh, some really explosive players uh, and it's just going to be a uh, it's just that team's going to be really good. And uh, if I'm blessed and honored and privileged to be on that team, then, uh, then I just can't wait to add my contribution. Yesterday evening, Canadian basketball recruit Jamal Murray made two months of basketball blues in the bluegrass go up in smoke. After he chose Kentucky over Oregon for this coming basketball season, the addition of Murray to go along with fellow incoming freshman Isaiah Briscoe and sophomore Tyler Eulis gives UK coach John Calipari arguably the best backcourt in the country. The commitment also lifted UK to the top of the recruiting rankings. 247sports.com positioned Kentucky ahead of Duke, LSU, Arizona, and California for the number one recruiting class in the country. And now the fever builds for another big blue basketball run. Now we'll go to the College World Series. It came down to a winner-take-all affair last night as the Vanderbilt Commodores were looking to capture back-to-back -back titles while the Hoos of Virginia were in search of their first-ever College World Series championship. Vandy was well on their way early on. Bottom of the first, Dansby Swanson, Major League Baseball's number one overall pick earlier in the spring draft. Ground out run with score. Next first baseman Xander Wheel with the double down the line. Doors up 2-0 early on and will on their way. But hold on, we'll move on to the fourth. And Virginia strikes back in the name of Paven Smith with a two-run swat. 375 feet away. Game is tied at 2-2. And Smith, he wasn't through just yet. Smith would come back again and slaps this one in the hole at shortstop. Virginia on top for the first time. Smith single-handedly leading the club to a crown. They're going to put a statue for this kid in Charlottesville, Virginia. You better believe it. Vandy with the tie run at the plate. Bottom of nine. Freeze frame. Championship. The Hoos win the College World Series 4-2. The final. Virginia's 44 wins. The fewest by a national champion since 1968. And finally tonight, the Cincinnati Reds have been surging of late, winning five of their last seven games. Reds found themselves in Pittsburgh last night, and at this time, I would personally like to say welcome back to Marlon Bird. Top of the first off Pirates ace Garrett Cole. Bird takes it to his former teammates. Yeah, run that up the flagpole in Pittsburgh. A two-run home run. And the Reds would cruise behind Mike Leak for a 5-2 win. Manager Brian Price was glad to have Marlon Bird healthy after only 16 days away with a fractured wrist. Uh, you know what? I, I didn't really want to put a timetable on it. I, I, the expectations are, I, my expectations are really that, uh, that we're going to go out there and perform extremely well, man for man, for man every game. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a hard game to play, but I, I, I have confidence that these guys can play at a very high level. Considering how much time he had off, he went and played one and a half uh, rehab games. I'm very pleased with how, how he came out of that rehab for sure. Aren't we all? Reds are going to be back in Pittsburgh tonight to wrap up their series on Hit City USA 98 1. 104.3 FM at 7 o'clock. And Gary, that's a look at sports. Okay, and thank you for. Oh. The Who's. Yeah, they're the Cavaliers, <laughs> but there's a, a nickname that they call the Who, the Wahoos. Oh, they okay. shortened it to Who's. <laughs> so you really got to be a fan of Virginia to uh -huh. know Who's in that reference. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. We'll be right back. <laughs> Well, 
Well, Lathan, some storms firing up throughout the region? Firing up as we speak, especially in parts of Floyd, McGoffin, and Johnson counties. These are moving to the east and to the southeast. Nothing severe as of now, but the Storm Prediction Center uh, just let us know that there is a chance that we could see a watch box issued here within the next hour or two. So we will keep you posted throughout the evening. Okay, thank you. And uh, for those, Jamie, that can't get enough sports. We'll replay Sports Guys <laughs> tonight, 7 o'clock here on EKB TV. Okay, thank you. That will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, and thanks for watching.